Hi, my name is Amisha Gangadid, and my group will be talking about mutual aid and the struggles we have as a community together to reach higher standards and raise awareness to the government that we all need help, even if we're poor or wealthy in some kind of way. So I will be talking about what is mutual aid. So what is mutual aid? Mutual aid is when ordinary citizens band together to take care of one another's needs with the idea that the systems in which we live in are failing to do so and that we need to take care of those jointly immediately without needing to put pressure on authority figures to act morally. In the current day, there are still problems of having basic necessities. Mutual aid is a concept and a method found of the values of solidarity, direct action, cooperation, and understanding. Mutual aid is not charity. Rather, it is the creation of maintenance of a new social network where individuals contribute what they can and receive what they require, free from oppressive systems of authority like the government. We need to have mutual aid because the government isn't going to help all of us. And in order for all of us to get help, we first have to band together as a community and help each other out. I'd like to relate back to one of the specific events that I had been with my professor and class. One of the events that I discussed with is Anthony Davis. Davis and his team are located in Newark and their group is called the Newark Water Coalition. And they acknowledge that water, housing, and food is a human right, while the government doesn't. Their goal is to foster the development of an autonomous, local, national, and global community of individuals who understand the relationship between systemic environmental racism and capitalism. The NWC fights to liberate natural resources, whether it be food, land, air, or water, as all sources of life for all. The Newark Water Coalition is one of the frontline organizations fighting for clean water in the city of Newark. As we all know, Newark is where most factories are stationed at. Though the fight is still ongoing, they want to recruit volunteers to help empower their group to give those who struggle with access to daily and basic needs. This group alone says a lot about the world we live in. And in order to fight this, we have to be able to come together as a community and try to fix this problem because the government, again, won't try to help us. To solve this problem, we can try to band together, as said before, help each other and neighboring communities so no one has to be alone. Hey guys, it's Diana. I'm gonna be talking to you about some eye-opener facts and background on mutual aid. Enjoy. Researching on the importance of mutual aid, it is believed to be that the first organization to ever exist was in the ancient Rome called Caliga, meaning College of Association in Rome to act as a legal entity. Members of Caliga helped one another and provided and offered support of any kind, such as assistance in food, created social society safety, financial aid, and even burial services. An admirable mutuality I discovered while researching was the Ahi Brotherhood created by Ahi. He um, was um, a mover in the 13th century in Turkey. His vision of spreading the mutual aid throughout regions of the world would last for centuries, and he did. He fought for a world of guilds, workers, and connecting together and operating in a context of ethics and faith to enable a peaceful collaboration across economy and society. How Newark Became Newark, written by Brad Tuttle, was introduced to us by Professor Kristen Scurson at Rutgers University. It was a true eye-opener on the clear argument in that the government alone to provide for Newark's current and, for and future needs weren't and still aren't quite as successful. The book really gave insight on Newark's desperate struggles from the 20th century and beyond. The book exposed the almost non-existent government-run welfare programs. Rutgers temples, churches, and ethic social clubs help provide for its members by helping them find employment and providing them with other forms of financial aid. A friendly sister and Young's Men Welfare Society were two Jewish organizations also founded to address social health and welfare issues. In 1881, they were able to build a three-story structure on Pine Street for the community to have a dance hall, gymnasium, and bowling lane and library. Mutual aid is important today, tomorrow, and always. Hi, my name is Isabella and I will be talking about why mutual aid happens and some common examples. There are several factors that contribute to the need for mutual aid. Focusing on Newark, the list comes down to poverty, inadequate access to affordable quality resources, racism, and environmental injustice. Mutual aid can be in the form of clothing drives, food banks, sharing resources like books or tools, and neighborhood watch groups. 
Instead of turning to, for example, the local government or police force that has failed the people, coming together addresses the immediate needs and gaps in services. There's a documentary from 1967 called There's No One to Help Us about a food buying club for my Newark welfare mothers. They are seen organizing and donating their own money to buy food in bulk at lower prices. But I think that you should freeze the list there and let's get on a working basis to see just what we're going to do because this list could go on forever, really. I think, I think that's why. There should be a membership fee in order to join the club, in order to have the money in the treasury whenever we get started. How, how high? All right, this is like... What do you all feel? You know, like, I'm going to really leave it up to them. No, be what it makes, makes well, I say myself, I feel that everybody should be able to put in $10. This is my own fan. Now, what do we get for this membership fee of $10? Then? All right. This is a membership fee in order to hold in the trade, in order to run the thing, as far as, like, paying the thing that we have to have, you know, like, truck. We got to order a truck. How are we going to get it? I mean, you know, like, we got to rent a truck or pay somebody to go get the stuff or whatever. Like, we got to have the money in order to get started. I don't know if everybody here is on welfare when they're talking about $10 at this date in the month to give up. Now, you're looking at this video as someone nearly 60 years into the future. I'm assuming your first thought is probably, you're all in a tough situation together, and you're all going to starve together if you don't make some sacrifices. But, if you were a parent, specifically a person of color, with children at home, not enough money to live comfortably, but not enough to live off welfare, such sacrifices could cost you everything. Just imagine, you're not making enough to feed yourself, your partner, or your children. And that's really scary. You're thinking, how much money does your family need to donate to have food on the table? And, we can barely afford everything else. How can we afford to donate $10? Through this lens, now you can see how tough, how stressful it was to organize and plan, gather donations while keeping promises, especially when no one has any money to begin with. People, in short, were scared, and rightfully so. It's possible that even the ones organizing the food buying club were scared to fail, but they didn't. In the end, they do come to a common understanding, highlighting the resilience and solidarity of the Newark welfare community during challenging times. And this is a prime example of what mutual aid is. Hey guys, my name is Carmen, and today I'll be talking about the help of mutual aid during COVID-19. COVID-19, a pandemic leading many to illness and even death, was a horrible time for many. Entering the USA in January 2020, the disease started spreading quickly, leading many to visit the hospital and seek attention immediately. It had ruptured the global society, leading prices to get higher, including rent. It was a tough time for many. Communities have seen healthcare systems struggle, lockdowns, and unrest. This rupture had also created a space for radical politics of mutual aid. In the brief period since mutual aid was introduced, we have witnessed a wide range of approaches, applications, and strategies. Contributory groups strive to actively champion the agency of the marginalized so they can contribute to social life going beyond the traditional charity model. One exemplary of a contemporary mutual aid operating in radical tradition was a mass membership organization, network of low-income people organizing for fair deals for communities named Acorn Bristol. Prior to COVID-19, they organized around issues of housing inequality in recognition of the fact that housing insecurity is often increasing in people's lives. They gather numerous amount of members to perform rent strikes to stop elections and to demand that safety standards are met and repairs are made. COVID-19 left many sick and even dead. Additionally, it has affected well-being, participation in the labor market, household incomes, and housing security. Even so, there are indications that the way people are supported and cared for in our communities has changed. Despite the COVID-19 pandemics, many atrocities and sneaky side effects. Mutual aid offers a plan and philosophy for beginning to image how we might act differently in the future to prevent such incidents from turning into tragedies. The purpose of this paper is to advance the geological understanding of how human strength and implicit mutualization can be utilized. We might be able to stop further tragedies by evaluating how we handled the COVID-19 tragedy. Hi, my name is Melanie. Today I want to talk to you about current day North New Jersey and how gentrification is affecting its residents, more specifically its low income residents, and is leading them to have to rely on mutual aid. So what is gentrification? Gentrification is a socioeconomic upgrading of previously low income neighborhoods, and this has become super widespread within cities all across the country within the last two decades. Research has found that across several black gentrifying neighborhoods, Start quote, people tended to move out to poor neighborhoods in the city that were not gentrifying. These areas also had higher violent crime rates and lower test scores, end quote. Many people stay in the city but move out to different neighborhoods, like the downtown area of Newark. People are being pushed out and essentially bought out, which forces them to have to move to the south side of Newark and even Irvington. However, there are several reasons why poor people may not move out, even when housing values and rent rises. Some adapt to strategies to stay, such as living in crowded households or offsetting their financial costs or benefits by housing subsidies. This leads people down the route of mutual aid. Mutual aid efforts emerge when property value and rent rises and people are facing eviction and housing insecurity. Mutual aid often evolves into activism efforts to address the root causes of gentrification, such as housing policies and economic inequality. 
Many individuals and families in underprivileged neighborhoods faced financial strain and struggles to meet basic human needs. Mutual aid initiatives sprang to provide financial assistance, food, and other essentials to those in need. Brick City Mutual Aid is an example of a network of over 70 people in and around the New Jersey area. They came together in response to the COVID-19 crisis, and they began delivering and redistributing clean water and food, as well as supplies to individuals and families in Newark who needed them. They later began participating in protests and even political action. By the end of 2020, Brick City Mutual Aid had redistributed almost $20,000 in donations to families and individuals in the forms of grocery supplies, cash payments, which went towards shelter, bills, and assistance devices. It's crucial to recognize that lockdown, job losses, and economic uncertainty contributed to food insecurity in underprivileged communities. Mutual aid initiatives have been an absolute game changer in helping ensure that everyone has access to nutritious meals.